I think we'll just give it a couple more minutes and then we'll get started. Do we have a lot of people on board or how, do we have very many people here? I'm um, seeing 13 so far. Oh, OK. I think people are still probably wrapping up their dinner. I think so, too. Is uh, Nicole here? We should, it'd be nice if we wait. Or she can wrap it up, too. If she doesn't, if she's, I know she's planning on being here. But if she does, then I can just greet people. She can, she can wrap it up at the end or whatever she wants. I mean, she can say hi whenever. Whatever you decide, she can do whatever. We can do it. Yeah, we can just play it by <laughs> ear, whatever, whatever works. Sounds great. Yeah, I think we'll get started. Uh, good evening, everybody. I'm Scott Merrick, uh, Senior Transportation Planner at Ramsey County. Uh, tonight we are going to have our second public meeting on the Vadness Boulevard Roadway and Trail Design Study. We had met um, late last year, last fall, to kind of introduce this project to you, and we're excited to be back this evening to provide a little more detail on the trail design concepts that we've developed. Um, a little bit of background on the staff that have been involved with this project. Again, I, um, I'm Scott Merrick with Ramsey County Public Works. I'm the project manager. We have Greg Brown from Kimley Horn and Associates, who's our uh, planning and engineering consultant that's leading the work um, for us. Um, we also have our agency partners, uh, Jesse Farrell from City of Vadnais Heights, Bryce Sheeran from City of Little Canada, uh, Scott Yonke and Connie Ber Bernardi from Ramsey County, also Katie Everett from um, Active Living Ramsey County Communities and uh, City of Vadnais Heights, and Rich Strawman from Active Living Ramsey Communities. Um, can we go to the next slide uh, with the uh, map, please? Thank you. Um, before we get into the details this evening, I want to uh, introduce our two special guests, Commissioner um, Nicole Fretham and Commissioner Mary Jo McGuire. We're very excited to have our commissioners with us this evening, and they wanted to say a few introductory words. I want to start. Who do you want to start? Scott, why don't I start? Nicole, you can wrap it up. Um, so I, hello everyone. Thanks so much for being on this uh, and on this call and at this open house. I'm Mary Jo McGuire. I represent District 2 in Ramsey County, which includes the city of Little Canada and Roseville. And then I go west to Little New Brighton and uh, St. Anthony Village and uh, Lauderdale. But it's great to see you all. I also am a co-chair for Active Living Ramsey Communities, and I see we have our other representatives from Active Living on the call that are gonna help present. So just wanted to welcome you all and um, I'm gonna be on the call to listen as well as you and listen to your comments and uh, hear the project overview as well. So I just wanted to say hi and thank you and uh, appreciate your, your uh, participation. Thank you, Commissioner McGuire. Uh, I'm Commissioner Nicole Fretham. I represent the cities of Venice Heights and Shoreview, uh, where I think it ends right before we get to Shoreview. Uh, really excited to see the trail designs uh, here with the Venice Boulevard. I was uh, I very much enjoyed last fall getting to take a bike ride along Venice Boulevard with Council Member Steve Rogers and Public Works staff. Uh, and hear about their vision for this area. There's a lot of opportunity uh, to make a great uh, trailway here for pedestrians, bicyclists, and folks who want to visit many of the amenities that are going in along this corridor, including the new brewery going in right by the lake, uh, new housing over on the Rice Street side. Uh, so very excited for these options and also just this area here in Badness. It's one of our 
one of the rare lakes we see in the metro area or even anywhere in Minnesota where we don't have housing uh, immediately on the lake shore. So it's a it's a lakeside walk that's accessible to everyone. So really excited to be able to put in some infrastructure to make that safe for people to do. So I'll be on the call tonight. Uh, we'll need to take a brief break to finish the bedtime routine, but can't wait to see these designs and hear everyone's feedback. Thank you. And thank you so much again, Commissioner McGuire and Commissioner Fretham uh, for taking time out of your busy schedules to be here this evening and providing your support. We appreciate it. Uh, just a, a little refresh for those of you that may have missed the first meeting last fall. So again, this is the Vadness Boulevard trail study. This is in the city of Vadness Heights and also the city of Little Canada. Uh, it's just north of the 694 corridor extending from Rice Street on the west end over to Kohler Road uh, on the east end, uh, pretty close to actually to Vadness Heights City Hall. Uh, as you can see, it's on the south side of Vadness Lake. Um, so in the meeting last fall, we kind of went over the existing conditions of the corridor, uh, a little bit about the purpose and need for the project, and just kind of orient orientated people to the issue that we were going to be studying. This evening, we're gonna do a little bit of a deeper dive and actually show you some conceptual design concepts that have been developed um, for the corridor. We've worked closely with both cities and our engineering consultant um, and also our planning team at Ramsey County um, and engineering team. And we've developed a concept for the north side of the roadway and also the south side of the roadway. So I think the big picture takeaway is that it is possible to build a trail along this roadway. There are some pinch points or some challenging areas, but there's also a lot of opportunity, um, a lot of beautiful scenic overlooks, um, and it would be a very nice project to implement. So um, we're excited about this. Uh, there isn't any funding secured at this point to build the project. Um, that will kind of come as the next step. Later this spring, we'll come back to you with more of a final recommendation. And then after that, uh, we're going to work closely with both cities to see if we can find some grant funding to construct the project. But as of right now, there is no construction timetable or funds set aside to build the project. But we are very excited about the possibilities and happy that you were able to come this evening to share some time and provide your input to us. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Greg um, and the Kimley Horn team to kind of walk you through the details of our presentation. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Um, here I'll talk just a little bit about our agenda. We want to uh, talk a little bit about what we heard in the fall. Uh, then we'll get to uh, an overview of the of the concepts that we've uh, developed and um, some specific specific areas where intersections are being looked at for potential improvements. Kind of an outline of what we see the schedule being uh, beyond this this meeting here tonight, and then open it up for question and answer. And uh, as we get started here, at, even as I'm speaking throughout the presentation, you're you're free to submit questions. Um, there's generally two ways to do that. If you're on the web version, you should be able to to click a button in the lower right corner of the of your screen to ask a question. And if you're on a mobile device, there's a upper right corner of your screen should have a Q&A icon that you can that you can click on. You can type in a question at any time during the presentation, so it, probably a good idea to do it as something's fresh in your mind. We'll be trying to organize those a little bit behind the scenes as as we're going through the presentation and then uh, get to hopefully all of them or as many as possible. But we will uh, follow up on all the questions, kind of synopsize the questions and responses, and that will be posted on the web uh, following the uh, the presentation. So uh, a little bit about uh, what we heard in the fall, some just kind of an overview of the of the feedback that we received. So uh, one of the questions that we asked you is. How do you travel along Vadness and Centerville Road? And maybe not surprisingly, you know, a lot of people uh, bike and walk today. Um, and of course, 
the, the majority of 84% of the highest, I should say, drive. But uh, I think what our intent is and what a lot of people expressed in those fall meetings is it, it even though they use it every day or very frequently, I should say, it, it uh, leaves something to be desired from a comfort or safety level because there is not really a dedicated space. You're on the shoulders and, you know, just things are feel a little bit precarious. So it's well used today. And I think a facility like this will just make it, a, a, you know, a, a prime uh, local route to, to go all the way around the lake. You know, another thing we heard is you can get around a, a good portion of the lake, but not not entirely by trail. So this would really fill a gap that uh, that's been there for a long time. So the highest ranking goal that we received was to create that safe and comfortable walking environment. Because um, said people are using it today for walking and biking and jogging. But uh, uh, certainly a little bit of, of concern there, and especially with younger children or letting letting uh, you know, school age children use the corridor without supervision is, is something that's really not comfortable to people. But other things that were important, we're linking up to existing trails. As I mentioned, there is a, a trail network around much of the lake. So this would be a huge connector to not only the regional trails on Rice Street, but Edgerton Road as trails. There's, there's a trail connection at County Road E on the east end, as well as the uh, a, a potential link up around the east side of the lake at Edgerton. So making those connections are a big part of what we look at in any of these type of projects. And this one really offers a lot of opportunity in that front. Some of the main themes that we heard was uh, a general support for having a facility that's separated from traffic to add to that safety, provide a safe um, uh, feeling. You know, uh, connect connections, as I mentioned, uh, to existing trails, the Centerville Road, Edgerton Street, Rice Street has a trail system. Uh, to some extent, to, to the extent the project can reduce traffic speeds and calm traffic, that would be a good thing. And there are existing curves and blind spots along the corridor that um, would like to see attention. These things that we heard that the the design, whether it's in the trail design per se, or if it's in kind of our accompanying road improvements that, that go along with the trail. So we'll walk our way through the corridor here and then explore some ideas uh, along the corridor that we'd like to get your feedback on. And as Scott said, we're generally looked at the project as what would a trail on the north side look like and a trail on the south side look like and what are some of the pros and cons and forces and issues that, that relate to those those sides. Uh, I would say, you know, if we choose north or south, it doesn't mean it has to be on that side the whole way, but uh, we would we would probably uh, be re reluctant to switch sides uh, other than maybe one location where it can be a safe crossing. We really want to avoid crossing a busy road like badness if, if we can. But if there's a compelling reason to be on the north side for the west half and the south side on the East segment or something. That's something we want to hear about too. So feel free to to you know comment along those lines. So in this western end, beginning at Rice, uh, the north side concept here would would utilize. Uh, there's a little bit of existing trail. I know there's some redevelopment uh, proposed here right in this corner. It would come along, and to the extent possible, we would utilize the bridge, the uh, relatively recent uh, roadway bridge that was constructed and come along and go along the north side of the causeway. Uh, I, I also want to point out that we have identified a potential alternative connection because you know modifications to this bridge structure are a little bit complicated and a little bit expensive, but we, we think there's some doable solutions there. But we also want to acknowledge there is a potential to make a connection up to Rice Street kind of on existing uh, surface areas. So we'd be curious about people's thoughts uh, relative to that um, approach. So this is a cross section of, of the bridge. Today the bridge at its kind of typical width is about 60 feet, just a little bit over 60 feet. There's a, a very generous uh, raised median in much of that bridge. Now that does neck down as you go east and that's where we would have to uh, do some some modifications to the structure to provide enough width for a trail. But in the majority of the bridge with this width, we could redefine the spaces essentially, reduce some of this median and, and the left turn lane that goes with it and 
and convert some space over on, in this case, the north side that could allow essentially about a 14 foot space. We like to have a little bit of buffer between walls and barriers and the trail system so people feel comfortable there. We would probably recommend that a, a traffic barrier, a, a lower rise barrier be installed between the, the actual vehicles and the portion of the bridge that would be used for a trail. So that it, the good news is that that's a, it's a reasonable um, solution. It, this area down here, right as you get to the end of the bridge, does get narrower than that's that 60 feet. So we would have to do some some structural modifications, a little bit more significant to make that work. This next image here is a, a trail on the south side. It's a very similar approach in this case. Uh, we would we would redefine, if you will, the space on the on the structure, make room for a trail on the west or the south, and then that would just come along the south side of the road as you leave um, the structure itself. Basically the same idea, two traffic lanes, a narrower median, and then a, a two-way mixed-use trail on the south side in this case. Um, now we, we kind of make our way to the what we call the causeway, where the roadway is uh, just a little bit above the lake itself. This area has got some of the you know more dramatic vistas and views and the really neat experience that, that could be had with a trail versus walking on the shoulder today or biking on the shoulder where you don't quite feel comfortable and especially probably don't want to linger and just gaze out at the lake like like you might if you were in a protected trail. So we'll look first at the north side and, and something I want to bring to your attention here too is this would be one of our connection points. So we know you know into the regional park here where there's already a, an established trail network. We would want to make this this intersection of the park access road and Badness Boulevard as uh, safe as possible. We would probably look at trying to realign it a little bit, the the uh, intersection so cars can see people and cars for that matter at this intersection. Uh, another thing I want to point out in this in this area is there is a potential that the Troutbrook Regional Trail could come up this way along the, the uh, water services corridor, if you will, and tie in. And this would be a place for that could connect to um, the Vadness Trail and they would cross the road here in order to make that connection. We're also showing it if the main trail was on the north side of the roadway here, we would have some kind of connection. So the uh, Five Star Estates um, residents could have a sidewalk or, or an ability to get to this safe crossing location. And we think crossing at this location is probably a little better than, than uh, right at the roadway intersection because of sight lines in the corner. So those are things we're thinking about and we just want to flag at this point of the study. Uh, as Scott said, this is preliminary, so we're not getting into uh, you know, a lot of detail, but we do want to identify uh, things that we want to uh, flag for future study. So this is what a cross section would look like on the causeway. You can see the, you know, the two water bodies. Uh, we, would have, um, we would have a trail kind of right up on the edge of the water, essentially. Uh, not sure, there might be places where we would need a little railing depending on the slope here, but not necessarily. That would be something we'd figure out in final design. Uh, on the south side, looking at that for the south option, the trail would be kind of, kind of a mirror image. Another point to make is we would have a, a little, um, uh, the space that we'd be creating, I've mean, I got a touchy mouse here. The space that we'd be creating would, would uh, be plantable. We're showing just kind of tall grasses here that would work well with um, uh, kind of the, the vernacular of the lake, uh, but it would be wide enough to plant trees as we go further along into the other parts of the corridor, making that a treed area is probably uh, a real, another benefit, I guess, of, of the idea of separating the trail and the, um, and the vehicles. So our next zone that we're looking at is kind of leaving the lake but going into that beautiful wooded portion of the corridor where we have uh, regional park and the, the regional water service on one side and sometimes parkland and there's there's the school district or the school property in the south there's also some city property in the south that that's um, currently generally wooded so this is a little different character than than the lake of course uh, a trail on the north side could 
quite easily in the space that we have available in the existing roadway right away. We've also spoken with the regional water service who, who controls or owns the property north of the roadway. And that dash line that you see in, in the image represents a potential to maybe meander the trail further away from the road. So the experience of a, a biker or a walker uh, could be a little bit more natural, you know, maybe weaving in and out of the, the woods. We would want to make sure, you know, as that design goes forward, if, if we end up on that side of the roadway in this area, that uh, we consider safety and making sure that people would, you know, uh, not feel like they're either don't know, you know, they're too deep into the woods and not quite sure where they're coming out and there's eyes on the trail to some extent. Um, so those are things that would be part of our, our consciousness as we look at the design, but we want to flag too in this location, a connection to the school. So if the trail is on the north side, we would want to make sure we have a, a safe connection to the school property so that students could access the, the main trail, whether they're uh, not necessarily going to and from school, but it could just be going for a walk to the lake or using it for recreation, part of you know physical education. I, we did speak to the school as well as part of our our uh, conversations with stakeholders. And one of the things that the school mentioned that it, it caught my ear is a lot of students go up to the fast food restaurants on rice, so they could actually utilize the trail for that. Uh, in the future. So anything we can make it easier for students to get fast food is a good thing, I think. So here's a couple cross sections related to this part of the, the corridor. As I mentioned, there's plenty of room here to fit a trail and a generous boulevard. A uh, couple points that I'll, that I'll make, and this kind of carries on through through most of the corridor, but we would we would generally be looking for at least six feet of separation from the roadway and the trail. And you'll see a curb here in these, on these images. That curb would be in, uh, constructed in the roadway. Generally today, there's not curbing, but where the trail is located on the side, we would install a curb. We generally would narrow the road a little bit. So it, it today kind of varies from about 30 feet. In some cases, it's a little bit narrower than 30 feet. Sometimes it's a little bit wider, but we would uh, generally try to narrow the roadway up so that we're not uh, widening things um, any wider than we have to, but still creating kind of a green buffer between the trail and the roadway. You see in this exhibit, we still have about eight feet of space before we get to the the uh, regional water service property. And if the trail were to meander, it could the trail could maybe go as much as 20 or 30 feet away from the roadway, and that could vary as you're as you're traveling along. So it could create a kind of an interesting um, uh, experience on the north side. So here's a view on the south side. If the main trail was on the south side itself, the school would kind of have a natural connection to the trail. And very similarly, we would put a curb on the south side of the roadway, kind of shift the traffic a little bit northerly, kind of redistribute them on the space that we had available on the on the roadway and construct our trail. Again, um, quite a bit of room before we get to the, to the right of way space, the right of way being the land that the county uh, controls for roadway and, and trail purposes. So uh, Scott alluded to this early on in the in the presentation, but the good news is we we feel like we can fit a trail facility either on the north or south uh, through the whole corridor without uh, acquiring property. So that's a that's a plus. That isn't always uh, the case in these type of projects. Making our way a little bit further east, uh, leaving the kind of the school area, working towards the Twin Lake Court area. Trail on the north side, again, we, we want to make sure properties and, and residents that live south of the roadway have a safe way, safe means to get to the trail if it's on the north. So we would look at improving a crosswalk in this vicinity and maybe making a, a connection, a uh, little sidewalk connection on the south side there to get both these uh, neighborhoods, if you will, defined by the streets into a safe crossing to the north side, the main trail facility. This is a cross section of, of that general location uh, with the Twin Lake Court on the south and the uh, trail on the north. Here's this, the uh, existing topography starts to get a little bit steeper here. We get a little bit closer to the lake. So there's there's locations here and there that we will probably need a little bit of retaining wall um, in, a, in a more detailed design and a subsequent phase of the project, more, more analysis and adjustments could be made to try to minimize that amount of wall, both from a 
cost perspective and a experience perspective and try to keep things as natural as possible along the corridor. Same general uh, strategy though, the roadway gets a little bit narrower to accommodate the, the space and the separation for the trail. So uh, same location, south side, uh, similar to uh, other areas. Now the neighborhood is on the south, the neighborhood is on the side of the main trail. So uh, we don't, wouldn't have the need to cross the road. We would just uh, look at, in this case, one of the things we would look at is a, a minor realignment of the of the intersection of uh, that the western uh, intersection here to provide a little better sight distances than currently exists. So if we introduce a trail into this area, uh, now we've got pedestrians and bikes that are moving along parallel to the road. We'd want to make sure that these intersections are as highly visible for all involved motorists and, and peds and bikes together. And this is a skewed intersections don't work too well from that standpoint. So we would identify this intersection to, to see a little bit of realignment. And we think all that could still happen within public, public space and not impact any private property. Here's an image or a cross section of that south side here. Very, again, very kind of similar theme you've seen. We have a minimum of a six foot boulevard. In this case, um, we're, get, we're still fitting within the right of way. The edge of the trail is a couple feet from the right of way, and that would be our desirable minimum separation from the private right of way. There's still quite a bit of green space lawn uh, from that line, the right of way line to, the, to any homes, but it's something that we would want to uh, make sure that we respect as we uh, look at designs along the way here. Um, the John Mitchell Preserve area is just a little bit east here as we work our way east. You notice and everyone that's familiar with the corridor knows there is a bit of a bituminous trail in this area um, on the south side. Uh, of course, nothing on the north side at this time. So in this image, the, our first look-see will be putting a trail on the, on the north side. Similar, similarly, knowing we have that south side trail, we would want to have a, a good safe crossing at the neighborhood entrance there that would allow people on that trail as well as just people coming out of the neighborhood to safely get across to the main trail on the north side. Uh, similar uh, uh, look here, introducing a boulevard, narrowing up the main roadway a little bit. You might notice we've we've said lanes from 10 to 10 to 11 feet. Um, you will, know, we'll, as we get into final design and the subsequent phases of the project, the final determination will be made of lane widths. Would say typically um, existing lanes out there, at least how things are striped today, are about 12 feet. But as we uh, reimagine a lot of the infrastructure in the county, we're we're leaning towards trying to constrict those a little bit. Might be 11, might be 10. 10 would probably be the narrowest we would go. But uh, we'll be looking at that and kind of weighing that with all the other variables along, along the way or considerations as as more detailed design occurs. The next, these both these sections are kind of in this in this area here. You can see the existing eight foot trail on the right side of the screen. And then the new trail or the main trail, if you will, on the left side. Um, we, we have a little bit more grade fall towards the lake here. So we envision a little bit more substantial retaining wall, uh, but that can certainly can be accommodated in, in the, in the public space that we have, but we do kind of envision that being a necessity in this part of the corridor. Uh, the south side in the same area would allow, um, allow us to kind of co-locate the main trail and that is existing bituminous trail. We'd prob probably repave it, but as we're approaching the John Mitchell uh, neighborhood, there's a, there's a bit of a drop off to the south and we envision some retaining wall necessary there. As we get up a little bit further, we would have our trail basically at the toe of the of the uh, boulder wall that exists today. And um, instead of the roadway being right up next to it, we would we would essentially shift the roadway a little bit north, create that boulevard space. So we'd we'd have the separation again from the main trail to the roadway, and that the roadway as it as an entity would narrow up in its its overall width. Uh, Another view here, the next stop, if you will, on our journey is kind of up by the, the trailhead access, the regional park trailhead. So 
here's a uh, bird's eye view of a north side trail. Now this this area is probably one of our more acute um, topographical challenges where the lake really is right adjacent to the existing roadway. It drops off quite rapidly. So we, we had envisioned a trail on the north side of the roadway requiring a, a fairly uh, substantial and, and continuous retaining wall for quite a long length. This particular cross section shows a concept that in order to, to kind of minimize our footprint, uh, we would we would not have a uh, as wide of a separation. We only have a two foot maintenance strip between the trail and the roadway. Uh, knowing that's not uh, all that desirable from a comfort and safety and all the things I mentioned earlier on. We also have another example or another cross section in this area that would uh, introduce a boulevard like we would have elsewhere. In order for this to occur in this particular area though, we would have to essentially shift the roadway enough to, to rebuild the roadway in a little bit southerly location or more southerly location than it exists today. So in order to achieve this uh, cross section in this particular area, we would envision the roadway being fully reconstructed for a length probably in the thousand foot length or so, uh, somewhere in that range. That's different than most of the rest of the corridor. The sections that we talked about today generally have involved narrowing the roadway up and inserting a curb in the existing road. Maybe there's a little bit of milling and overlaying, but not, not a realignment of the road. In this particular pinch point area, Scott mentioned, you know, we have some areas that are tighter than others. This is probably our tightest area. And if we wanted to have a trail in the north and a boulevard, we would be looking at some, uh, some roadway reconstruction cost. If we were to look at the south side in this area, it's a little different animal. Uh, again, we would, we would have minimal roadway work. We would in, insert our curb as, as we showed here, we'd have a boulevard have our trail and then we have that that parkland to the right. This would also be an area if the trail was on the south that the trail could probably easily meander into that trailhead park area as well. Um, so uh, the south side would not, we don't see a situation if the trail on the south side in this area that would require a substantial roadway reconstruction. So our last segment uh, is going from Edgerton to County Road E. So our character again is is changed here from largely kind of a, a regional park and, and open space natural area to a more traditional neighborhood space. So uh, the, the main thing we looked at in this area from placing a trail is trying to minimize our footprint because every foot here is a much more acute problem, if you will, or challenge than it is when all the land is kind of more public and there's just more space. So the, the cross sections that we're looking at here, try to utilize as much as possible the existing curb to curb width. So one of the, the things that we have going for us, if you will, in this particular section is this existing roadway is quite wide. Uh, and if we look at first uh, a trail on the south and it's really kind of a similar story, just a mirror image if we go to the north. But as we, as we look at a trail to the south, um, we, we would envision uh, two ways to, to accomplish that. So the existing road limit, if you look at this exhibit, is about 37 feet uh, approximately. And uh, this out to out dimension of a two lane road, uh, a boulevard that's got that separation and a 10 foot trail is about 40 to 41 feet. So we're about three or four feet wider than the existing curb to curb width. So it's a it's a pretty modest increase. It's not like adding a whole trail on the outside of the existing roadway. We, we know that would be quite a bit more substantial from a, a front yard impact, but uh, this would be quite modest and still achieve our goals of trail separation and roadway. So the roadway now has become quite a bit narrower. This, this road would be somewhere in the neighborhood of 24 feet wide. So that should also have a, a benefit of narrowing or of uh, calming traffic, hopefully slowing traffic just from that kind of constriction. Um, so this is something we'd like to certainly get feedback on from, from people. There's another approach to this segment that we'd like to also explore. So in this case, we, we left the one side of the roadway, um, the left side in this image, essentially as is, and we worked our way to the right. We narrowed the roadway up 
from the right side pushing left and built our trail. So the properties on the right side, the trail side of this exhibit would see the edge of the trail would be a little bit closer to their, you know, to their property still within the right of way, but the edge of the roadway actually would be quite a bit further away from them. So uh, that that's going to move 12 feet or so away, but there'll be a, a few feet of a trail that would be closer. Another approach to this is just taking that difference, that 41 feet and, and splitting it between both sides of the roadway. So in this concept, the left curb gets a couple feet closer or further, you know, outside the existing roadway to the left, and the edge of the trail is a couple feet closer to the right. So it's kind of balancing that additional width that we need, that, that extra four feet instead of putting it on one side or the other. And we've we can envision the trail on either the north or south here, but it's the same um, it's the same dynamic that's going on. So we didn't we didn't sketch it on the north side, but uh, we can certainly envision it on, on both sides. This plan view shows the trail on the north side you know, just schematically. Another point I'd I'd like to bring out in this particular plan view is the connection. Uh, you notice that we have a note of a future connection up along the east side of the lake. Uh, that would tie into trail that that's just a little bit beyond the view here. Back to our theme of making all the connections we can. We know there's an existing trail in Edgerton south of Badness, so we would make sure that we would connect connect to that as well. Then the tail end or the terminus of our project is County Road E. We'd be looking at that intersection as well to see if there's any safety improvements. One of the things that we look at these days is is free right turns. Uh, they're very efficient for moving cars through intersections, but they're not that desirable from a pedestrian and bike safety perspective. So we might might look at that or we would suggest that be reviewed uh, in a future um, future design. So the other thing I'd like to talk about here relative to the roadway types of improvements, and I mentioned intersection improvements. Edgerton is probably the one intersection in the corridor uh, that we we think could see some significant improvement from a bike and ped safety perspective. So it has, as everyone probably knows that's participating here, has a, a real significant skew, which makes things very difficult to see as you're approaching the intersection. And it, you know, it doesn't have a, a significant in, uh, accident history to date, but when we're talking about introducing higher volumes of pedestrians and bikes, and especially potentially users that are younger because it's a safer facility. So more children or school aged children. We want to make sure that all of the intersections are as safe as possible. So we we would envision that uh, the Edgerton intersection be considered for some geometric improvements to uh, reduce crosswalk widths, to uh, improve sightline distances and just make uh, the interaction of the vehicles and the pedestrians and bikes as safe as possible. There's a couple general techniques that we would use. The, the first is just trying to create a, as much of a orthogonal or a normal four legged kind of cross intersection as possible. And in order for that to happen, we have in this case, you can see kind of the dash red lines. You can imagine uh, the roadway be, being realigned and going through that public space to the east. We know that uh, the county is planning to do some water quality improvements in this area. So anything that might occur with roadway realignment would want to be coordinated with any potential drainage improvements. So in this case, if the roadway were to shift a little bit south to make more of a 90 degree intersection, there would be more green space north of it. And this is also an area where the, the brewery is going to be going in. So I think some coordination with that uh, that project would be something that would be considered. This next image is a another concept, a roundabout in this location. So a technique that's sometimes used when we have challenging geometry in intersections or roundabouts, and you've seen them more and more around the county and around the, the region. So that would be something I think that that could be explored and to a similar vein, uh, coordination with the water quality um, improvements would be made and uh, need to be considered as well as coordination with the brewery and the redevelopment that's proposed in the uh, north side of this intersection, northeast quadrant. Uh, 
And beyond roadway and trail, or maybe in conjunction with roadway and trail, I'd say stormwater quality improvements are something that are going to be really in the forefront of our, our thinking. And as you go more into design, specific techniques and locations for that uh, will be fleshed out. But especially a project like this that's so intertwined with the natural environment and the pristine environment. And, you know, Vadness Lake is really a unique resource. Um, the uh, commissioner noted, you know, there aren't uh, private properties on it. And that's, you know, for a reason, the, the lake is really pristine. It's part of the water supply system. So anything this project could do to help uh, improve stormwater quality that's entering the lake is a good thing. So uh, these projects tend to give us some opportunities in along those lines. And it's it's something that would be considered as we move forward in, in design. So locations for uh basins or infiltration would be considered along the alignments and as as we get to the the next phase of this study we'll be identifying some locations that that could be uh or those could be good good locations to uh explore in a final design phase so here's a, a big picture view of the schedule we this is the same uh, schedule we talked about in the fall for any of you that were part of our fall meetings so we're we're basically at the winter 2022, and we're actually just into spring, so that's good, good news. But we're sharing our some conceptual designs with you here today. We want to get your feedback. Um, there's also a survey here that's going to be online, I believe, starting tomorrow, and uh, you'll be encouraged to to use that to provide feedback as well. And that's in the form of a map, so you'll be able to kind of uh, locate your comments geographically as they might apply to specific intersections or properties or, or interests, but you can also enter just general comments as well. So we're, we're at this winter 2022, we'll, we'll get your feedback. Uh, depending on that feedback and our, our subsequent discussions with the city stakeholders, we'll be looking at um, kind of firming up a either recommended alternative or maybe it's a couple alternatives from this point going forward. And as Scott said, there isn't money in the bank Yet, but that those that study or that that uh, report or that synopsis will be a good document that could be used to solicit for funding in the in the future. Um, so just uh, kind of a reminder that uh, we're we're getting close to the Q and A. Some things to think about for questions, and I know there's been a, a few questions that have come in here during the talk. But any preferences that you have on the side of the road? You, like one side or another and that can change along the corridor that's that's okay if that's how you feel uh, really interested in in intersections that you feel are dangerous or could see some improvements that you'd like to see a focus of in, in subsequent design phases and um, just any other design focus um, elements that that you'd like to see uh, as I mentioned, you know, we'll be getting your feedback tonight. We'll be getting feedback through the survey that will go online. We'll be kind of boiling that into a decision matrix, talking with our city partners and other stakeholders and seeing if that kind of gels around a, a particular location or alignment, north side or south side or some combination thereof. Then that's kind of the tool that that would be used to to get to that next step. And I'll. I don't know if Scott wants to to maybe reiterate what that next step is before I go into Q and A, but um, yeah, I think we just maybe want to take a quick pause. I just want to remind everybody that this project is being developed in cooperation with the City of Little Canada and the City of Vadnais Heights, and we do have Bryce Sheeran with us this evening from the City of Little Canada. And we have a number of representatives from the city of Vadnais Heights, I believe some of which have speaking abilities and some um, do not. But I guess I just want to open it up for both cities to uh, provide some input if they would like. Sure, Scott. Um, I'm Jesse, city engineer with Vadnais Heights, and I just want to thank uh, Greg from Kimley Horn and uh, Commissioner Pretham and McGuire for attending tonight and all the good work that Ramsey County is doing uh, for this uh, planning project. 
Uh, the city of Edna Sites is really excited about the potential for this project. Um, uh, there's a lot of communities and neighborhoods that tie into this, um, certainly beyond um, the immediate uh, vicinity of the project, but Five Star Mobile Estates and John Mitchell Preserve have both issued strong support uh, for this planning exercise. And we're just excited um, uh, to talk about it and imagine the possibilities. Uh, certainly the brewery um, uh, has the potential to become a community hub. There's a lot of stormwater management opportunities along the site uh, that we're interested in exploring and partnering with. And then uh, last but not least, uh, two schools along this, um, AFSA and then Vadna Sites Elementary School are both within this project's extent. So we're just uh, excited and thankful uh, that Ramsey County is uh, undertaking this planning exercise and as project partners, we're um, happy to provide any help we can and um, uh, really look forward to all the other comments and participation in this meeting. So thank you, Scott. Uh, thank you, Jesse. I also want to uh, introduce Bryce Sheeran from City Little Canada. Um, I don't know if uh, Bryce, if you wanted to say a few words. Yeah, Little Canada has, uh, again, thanks. Uh, I'm Bryce uh, with City of Little Canada. Thank you for having me on. Little Canada is just a small portion of this project, but you know, echo a lot of the same comments that we really support this and it's just going to be a great asset. So I'm um, looking forward to partnering. And I know that right now, Little Canada and Vadness Heights are currently working on the realignment of Twin Lake Boulevard. Uh, so they're, we're going through a project right now and I don't know the exact data on that. Uh, that's more of our public works department, but uh, I believe that's coming up here in the near future. So anything that goes on on that project uh, will make sure won't affect this potential uh, project here in the future, but definitely looking forward to this. And even though uh, we are just a very small portion, there is a significant number of Little Canada residents that can benefit from this trail. So looking forward to it and happy to answer any uh, Little Canada related questions. Thanks, Scott. Thank you, Bryce. Um, yeah, and I just uh, want to thank uh, everybody again for attending this evening. I think we had um, close to 30 attendees at one point. There's a couple that have dropped off now. Um, we will have the ability to receive um, text comments um, for those people in the public that have any questions or comments. And I also did want to um, remind people that we do have Commissioner McGuire and Commissioner Fretham with us this evening. We also have some elected officials and also uh, the city administrator and assistant city administrator from Vadness Heights um, connected with us, but there's some technology um, limitations uh, where we're not able to directly connect them with the audience, but just know that uh, we do have those representatives uh, um, connected and they are listening to your input this evening uh, and happy to receive any questions uh, that, that that you might have. I guess with that, I'm going to hand it back over to Greg to facilitate the, the Q&A session. OK, <clears throat> excuse me. Thanks, Scott. Um, yeah, we have uh, questions coming in, so I will I'll tackle a couple I can answer. There's a couple I'm going to hand off, but um, the first question that I see is related to shoulders uh, the question is if the trail is built will the road and shoulders also be re repaved some of the roadway needs it you know based on the, the questioner's comment i would say uh the answer is kind of yes and no so what we we're looking at on our cross sections that you sh that you've seen uh is we would to the extent necessary narrow the roadway up so we generally be installing a curb there's places we would have to do some mill and overlay in order just to facilitate that that narrow roadway up and and moving a curb in. Uh, with that said, uh, we these type of projects are multi jurisdictional, multi agency, and you know the, the focus here is how to get a trail in. But we understand the road and the trail are have a synergistic or symbiotic relationship, and uh, there are cases where it would probably make sense to do a lot more road work. Uh, that would be kind of a, a decision that's made in conjunction with Public Works. 
uh, and uh, if if there's funding that allows for that and it you know makes the most sense, it would happen. Uh, our intent, to some extent, is to come up with a trail design that's that's as uh, most economical as possible. So that tends to be the least amount of road work that is possible because the road work just adds cost, and and, and we're you know trying to build a trail versus road. All that said. There is, don't worry about left hand, right hand, because there is an understanding that if a road section needs it and it makes most sense to kind of fix the road with the trail and the intersections are a great example of that. I mentioned some intersection improvements. Those would be done in conjunction with the trail project or if the city, cities have a project that's coming earlier. Now that the study is in, in play here, there'll be coordination and and any work that's done on those projects wouldn't uh, be have to be redone or, wouldn't preclude work on the trail. So uh, a lot of moving parts and projects like this and, and the extent uh, we can fix multiple issues, I think we would. There's a, a question about um, moving or removing the south trail and moving the road and trail south. I'm not sure if I'm following that, but I think there there might be a, a uh, they might be getting at locations where the, the trail exists on the south, like um, by John Mitchell Holmes, and I think uh, that's that's theoretically possible. But back to kind of my first answer, we would probably shy away from doing a lot of road realignment if we can. But I think it's it, that's a good comment to to put on the map, the the uh, survey map, to make sure we're tracking that right, or or maybe call one of us you know, tomorrow or in the next few days. So we make sure we're understanding right. But to the extent possible, we would try to, you know, construct our trail on one side or the other. And we would make logical connections and maybe add little bits of sidewalk or connections on the opposite side of the road if it makes sense to get people to it, but probably would shy away from like a full realignment of the roadway. Uh, another trail design question uh, talks about narrowing in pinch point area areas. Could you narrow the boulevard and use bike lanes and pinch points? And I'd say the short answer is we could. Um, I think our preference would be to try to maintain that consistent off-road separated trail with a buffer versus um, putting people back on the road. And there might be cases where that, that six foot or eight foot boulevard with trees just isn't possible at that one section that kind of showed a real tight tight spot. But our, I think our general uh, approach or goal would be to, to maintain that and, and not um, direct bikes onto the road. With that said, some bikers will are very comfortable, you know, running on shoulders and they would continue to, to do that, I'm sure, even after the trail is built. We wouldn't preclude that, but I think we want to create a facility that's consistently safe and, and so thinking of kind of putting your kids on there so you don't have to worry about them going in and out of the roadway. There's a couple pro or a couple questions rather that I'm going to uh, ask Scott. There's, actually, there's two Scots. The first Scott, Scott Yonke, I think Scott's on, uh, could probably speak to the Trout Book Trail. There was a question on how that trail would cross 694, which is a good question. And I know there's been some thought on that. Scott, can you speak a little bit to that? Hi everyone, uh, Scott Yonke with Ramsey County Parks. So that's a great question. So at uh, at this time, the so there there is a a north extension to the Trout Brook Regional Trail, uh, and that extension would would start at Lake McCarran's County Park and extend north up to the the Badness Snail Lake section. Now there's still a great deal of planning that that still needs to be accomplished on this for exactly where that trail corridor uh, will extend through uh, the city of Little Canada. But at this time, there there has been some some past scenarios completed uh, for extending it north, and then um, as it would go north through Little Canada. Um, it would kind of come up to 694, uh, kind of south of where you, you seen that line that was drawn um, um, in, in, the, in the presentation. So it would be at uh, the intersection of like Spruce Street and County Road Drive on the south side of 694. So as a temporary 
um, the trail is located at that location. There would be a temporary uh, access or trail location um, over the Rice Street interchange because there is uh, a separated off road uh, facility at that location in the short term, but long term there was some consideration for a separated uh, trail uh, bridge that would go over 694 and then it would kind of touch down on on uh, Twin Lake Road and then um, extend north on the uh, St. Paul Regional Water Service property up to the intersection uh, that leads you into the Badness Park area. Thanks, Scott. Uh, there's a, a question. I think I'll I'll throw to Jesse if you're if you're able or available here talking about the the proposed development at uh, Rice Street. Just a sense for that because I think that's significant if I understand right. Uh, certainly. Um, so there's uh, conceptual plans for a, a relatively higher density residential development um, at Rice Street and uh, Venice Boulevard, very similar to what was built in Shoreview. So if you see what was built in Shoreview with Oliver's, the restaurant there, uh, something very similar across the street from Rice Street. Um, we're working with that developer and we're keeping them apprised of this plan, but certainly any connection that facilitates movement from residents to uh, the Ramsey County Regional Park and all the other connections to the east um, is something to get excited about. Um, hopefully I could, if there's uh, any follow up questions on that, I'd be happy to uh, take an email or a phone call uh, uh, tonight or tomorrow. Um, but hopefully I answer that OK. But it, it seems like an exciting possibility uh, to kind of finish out that quadrant. And and really it's a result of all the investment that Ramsey County did um, with the Rice Street uh, Bridge over 694. Um, if you look at how that corridor looked uh, prior to the project to how it looks today, it totally transformed that corridor. And uh, it used to be that pedestrians and bicyclists would have to share lanes with traffic over that crossing. Now there's a trail on both sides um, with good connections to Shoreview, Little Canada, and Venice Heights. So just an absolutely fantastic project, and um, we're hopeful that we can tie into that and continue those good connections. Thanks, Jesse. There, there are a couple of funding questions I'll, I'll ask Scott Merrick to speak to the first one uh, I think talks talks about staging so the question is could there be funding for a, a segment of the trail that would essentially complete the lake loop I think that would be from the the western lake entrance or uh, regional park entrance to Edgerton and then a loop or that connection of trail along the west side of Edgerton up to the existing uh, trail that goes around the rest of the lake um, so is, is that uh, could that be in the cards, I guess, is the nature of the question, Scott? Um, yeah, so the uh, the trail around the park would really be led by our parks department, uh, Scott Yonke and his team. The trail along Vadness Boulevard would be led by our public works team, but certainly we coordinate together and there's always the possibility to phase projects as it makes sense. Um, we are kind of running up against the clock here, and I do want to respect everybody's time. And I do want to also just give our two commissioners that took time out of their evening. Um, want to thank them again for coming. And I don't know if Commissioner Fretham or McGuire, if you had any any comments or any uh, takeaways that you wanted to share with the group uh, before we leave. Mr. McGuire, I'm having trouble hearing you. Are other people? Oh, sorry, yeah, you are having trouble hearing go. me there. Is that better? Well, yes. there we go. Sorry. Um, thanks. So I'm um, just thanks everyone for your comments. Um, I had some similar questions as the ones I saw in the question and answer. So thanks everyone for those. And I, I know we'll get back to you on, on the answers of the ones that you've asked. 
Uh, just to let you all know that we are going to have a workshop um, on the county board on speed limits. So I know there were some questions about speed limits and we're in the we're going to be in April having a workshop on that. So um, you can stay tuned for that. But thanks everyone. Uh, you know, Greg, Jesse, Bryce, everyone and Scott for all your comments. So thanks. Now, now, Commissioner Fetham, you can wrap it up. Yes, thank you everyone for coming, especially our, our city elected uh, and staff who joined us. Really excited for this opportunity. And I, and I think there are a lot of things coming together. You know, there, there's this trail project. Um, as Commissioner McGuire mentioned, we are having a, a workshop on speed limits coming up as well. And just thinking a lot about how we make our roads safer for everyone traveling on them, regardless of the, the mode that they're using. Um, as as you've seen from the presentation, you know, this isn't there. There continues to be opportunities for feedback as we roll along. So please make sure you you respond. Let us know what you're thinking and that that helps inform these decisions about how we can um, create a, a, a design that best fits the community's needs. But I, I'm really grateful for all this work and to see this moving forward. And I, I can't wait to have a more connected uh, trail structure throughout the, the North, North Metro suburbs. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Fratham and, and Commissioner uh, McGuire. Um, please know that if your question was not answered this evening, we will be responding to all questions and uh, we will provide that information on the project website um, at some point in the next week or two here though there will also be a recording of this presentation posted on the project website and we will be having one additional meeting later this spring uh, with some final takeaways and recommendations uh, from the study process but i want to thank again representatives from the city of Little Canada and the city of Vadnais Heights for being great partners and supporting us on this project and everyone that took time out of your evening to join us and the Kimley Horn team uh, for helping us through this uh, exciting planning process. And with that, I will uh, bid you all a good evening and uh, please visit the project website. Just Google uh, Vadnais Boulevard Trail Study and it, it'll come up and you can follow us for further details. Uh, thanks and have a nice evening.